it's going to weed out a lot of the tattooers that are at a lower skill level that have uh, put themselves in a position where I only do realistic roses. Yeah, they're getting very, very selective, Bro, right? I only do realistic roses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to Far Friends. It's your boy X back to you again with another video with the squad here. We got Adam, Nicole, and my man James over there. And today we're going to be talking about how COVID impacted the tattoo industry and how the upcoming recession could potentially impact the tattoo industry. So who wants to grab that bull by the horns? I got a lot to say, so everybody else should just go ahead and talk first before I get on my soapbox, because you know how I am. I think we mal we might have uh, all been in different scenarios when COVID was hitting. Yeah. Um, I actually worked at a different shop than all of you guys. Were you guys all at the same shop? I think Nicole was at a I, different at, shop. At 2020, I, I wasn't tattooing like full-time professionally at that point. I was like, with James at that point. Uh, yeah. I was I, hella paranoid, too, back then, too. I took a whole month off of work and shit. Yeah, you were. You were scared of the shit, bro. That was yeah, kind of weird. I was super scared. You know, black people, they're like, it's, they're, it's funny because in the movies, they're the first one it. to die, right? But in real life, we would out they're the last one to die. <laughs> in real life, they're the, it's, it's kind of a funny, weird Straight little up. contradiction, isn't it? Black in the, don't crack, too. In the movie, so, like, they're the they, first one to die. In real life, though, they're the last one because they don't, they don't mess around. I feel like they're the ones that are like, nope, and then they run away. Yes, yeah, straight that's, up. I feel like that's the movie trope. They're going. like, no. And yeah, then they just exactly, like get yeah. out of there. I was not oh, there's danger? Was, I'm not investigating. Yeah, yeah, like, let me tell good, you how paranoid good. I Can was. Can we just talk about how Xavier reacted to this? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> What? What you mean? Well, yeah. How'd you react to just okay, COVID yeah, happening? What I'm Obviously, you... so like it was different. Like I was like, all right, I gotta stay in the crib. Like shit's jumping off. So I immediately, <laughs> my first thing was I went on Amazon and bought an eight hundred dollar extra fridge and shit, so I could like like a deep have, freezer. Yeah, I bought a deep freezer, so nice. I could just stock the shit up with food for like two, three months. So I filled my house with food. I instacarted all my food and then sprayed it all down with like matticide wipes and shit. And uh, I'd go out the crib with like gloves and masks and shit when I had to go out. Other than that, I stayed at home, dude, and hang out with for like a month. I didn't come. Ass is full. I didn't come to work for like a whole last month, bro. It was at least a month before I came. Yeah, he, had, to work, he didn't bro. even just have the regular mask. He had the the KN95s. Yeah, the 95s. He had a Sub Zero mask on, yeah, Scorpion bro. mask. I wasn't playing around with. He's that all shit. got the 3M respirator. Until, on. until <laughs> yeah, exactly. Until I was certain that I was like, all right, I'm not gonna die from this shit. But at first, you know, like no one knew. So yeah, I was nobody just knew like, anything. You know, I'm gonna be cautious right now because it's not safe. I was and a prick James about was it. Like, <laughs> I was a prick about it. Yeah. Like, we do what we do. Yeah, everybody dies, bro. It is what it is. Die every day, B. Yeah, I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. Every day, B. I need this money, bro. <laughs> All right, but yeah, that was my experience with COVID. So let's let's get back on topic here, though. Uh, do you want to keep going on about that? No, that's pretty much it, bro. Well, Nicole, once I came back to work, it was cool. But I worked with I worked with a mask every day, and I stayed away from everybody that I worked from. That sounds pretty whack, that Nicole. <laughs> What was your reaction did, though? Hold on, before the call, what was your reaction uh, to COVID? How'd you how'd you read the situation? Like a G. I'm not gonna oh lie. God. So I didn't work with you guys at the time. Uh, I worked like at a, a different boss. shop over in Chandler, and this is before I worked with any of you guys. Um, my owner, the owner of the shop, treated it in a way where it was just like, okay, this is serious, guys. The shop is closed. And I took all of my shit and tattooed my favorite clients still. Um, I'm not going to say where, but I, I was still tattooing. And I, figure out, uh, I figured out a way to just set up in a, in a different location and take handpick all of my favorite clients. Uh, yeah, just still tattoo as much as I wanted. I thought it was great. I loved COVID. I'm not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love not vaccine. Like, Nobody's ever said like, that. No one was Bro, around. I, I was dude, by myself. I, I've been saying this shit all the time. Like, do that shit once a year because, like, even the two weeks of just being like pause, like that was dope. And I'm also not the kind of person to be like on the news all the time. So like, I was the last person to find out about this stuff. And I just so Same. happened to be at Costco when I was buying like toilet paper and, oh, and paper no. towels and like essential stuff you know what i mean so like i i just remember like being at costco and there would be like the kirkland brand was out and then i was like 
damn, that's what's up. Like, and then I was like, man, I gotta buy like the the Charmin brand and like the you know like the actual the lowly Charmin. Stuff. Yeah, your and store so had that was toilet paper. Bro. Same with water, water, paper towels, I toilet no paper, Costco all of that stuff. Membership. So of course, like I I grabbed all of that stuff. And dude, I'm not even kidding you. It was like within the next couple of days, like someone was like, yo, this COVID thing is happening, and I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> I just came up at, over at Costco, and now it's all sold out. So I kind of lucked out on that. Adam uh, was trapping toilet paper rolls by a hundred. I was slinging them for five bucks a pop. Everybody bought up a day. Yeah, I yeah. bought one. I remember. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I had my barber come through and just cut me up at the crib. Like, <laughs> so I was chilling. Like, what about you, I, I made a baby. <laughs> I made a baby. Yeah. Man. I was just living life, man. You know, yeah, it is what it chilling. is. COVID I, baby. Do that shit once a year. <laughs> what about you, Nicole? How'd you react to it when it happened? Oh, I mean, like tattooing wise, I wasn't tattooing full time. Uh, I mean, in general, point. though. Uh, I don't know. Like, what was your <laughs> what was your read on the situation? Um, Are you still in a weird place. I at that I was point, honestly or? kind of pissed off that they were like everything was being shut down so heavily. I was like, this is gonna, this is gonna cause some <laughs> issues. That was honestly my first reaction. I was like, this is <laughs> ridiculous, and like, the the aftershocks have been <laughs> horrible, and they will continue to be horrible, and like, <laughs> us up, and everything's <laughs> up the inflation, all that kind of stuff. But I kind of knew from the start. That's what I was worried about. I was like, I don't know. I was I like, this can't be that bad for for this it really can't same here i thought it was a huge overreaction it was a resp respiratory disease that they didn't really know a whole lot about they were talking about projected numbers and deaths and all those sort of things but i thought all these people that are on tv that are projecting these things and making it into like a big spooky scary story or whatever they are professionals that by <clears throat> definition of their likely personality type they are risk averse they are about science they are about people they're they're about science, but they are people that have dedicated their life to this field of study. And they feel like this validation that all the paranoia they had about like this uh, worldwide pandemic thing becoming something that destroys humanity, that they're all coming true. So it was almost like this self-fulfilling apocalypse type prophecy for those people. And I felt like it was being projected uh, through them in, in terms of fear in the media. And I just thought about it in terms of like, okay, well, it could do this to the respiratory system. It could do that, but it doesn't really sound like that, that big of a deal. And the reality is, is that humanity, um, we've been through things like this before. People are going to die regardless. And I really shouldn't change my behavior a whole lot. Um, you know, I'll take minimal precautions, but at the same time, shutting down the entire economy and every business is probably going to cause way more damage than keeping it open now. So ultimately, you decided to keep your shop open. Um, for a little bit. I feel like I didn't close it until the government mandated that I do because it was legally required in Arizona. Right. And I did that for a short period of time and just kind of tested whether or not they were enforcing it. And when I realized that they weren't, like I did the same thing. I was starting to tattoo people in a location that I cannot disclose to where I was like, I'm just going to do it on the side or whatever, right? With my favorite clients, people that I trust or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to shut down the shop. I'm going to let everybody know what's happening. And as soon as I realized that it wasn't being enforced, I was like, I'm going to tape up all the windows uh, to the shop, like with uh, painter's tape and uh, that paper that painters use to like guard from like splash or whatever the <laughs> f when they're uh, painting. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, keep on operating or whatever. So make it for appointment the, only. For only. And make it appointment only, only and just make it so that it's not. Know, James owns a tattoo shop, so uh, he was in a position to have to, you know, decide what. Make those decisions. Yeah. Gonna... So I thought the whole thing was just going to blow over super quickly. I thought it was dumb to shut down the economy. I thought it was smart to um try to do like the, the whole 15 days to slow the spread i thought okay well that's smart because we don't want the hospital systems to get overwhelmed to the point to where icu cannot handle all these new patients coming in but when it started getting beyond that i was like you know what this is getting because they're talking about who's essential and who's not and selectively basically isolating who can make money and survive and who can't and yeah there's stimulus checks but what the is that gonna do you know what i'm saying like it's not enough money to offset you know how much paper we make as tattooers and shit, right? And especially as a shop owner and somebody that 
charges a pretty good amount of money for tattooing personally i was like i'm just not willing to when do they, this when they started deciding who was essential and who wasn't i think that's when that's uh, when I, changed. I really started to take it personally Same. because I, I was like wow for you to decide like something that we've spent our whole life and just like in uh you know just like embrace so like, is my every... survival not essential yeah, exactly like literally like yeah, everything like, literally, that what is everyone else supposed to do is not essential all yeah. of a sudden and like now liquor stores are still open yeah you take my I mean? job out of the equation and just decide whether or not my survival and my ability to pay bills is right. essential so i think uh you know just making that decision that's got to be tough but you did what you had to do <clears throat> can we talk about maybe the aftermath of when things started to get opened up or we all live in arizona so it was actually considered uh a lot of us call it the wild wild west because uh governor Ducey at the time basically <laughs> just like opened up a lot of stuff before like basically like any other places in the u.s uh I think I and, for a month. and across the world arizona was yeah. specifically one of those places that was <laughs> like yeah whatever up, like restaurants we didn't like, care bars yeah, like it was it was it's the wild west out here <laughs> so I think he only closed it for a month and it worked month. And it worked. And people were literally it, flying here to come eat and party. It was and a shit. feeding frenzy. It was wild. Yeah. Is what the f was. And then what happened though is everybody got all this all these stimulus checks and uh everybody started working from home, getting all kinds of raises. People are making more money and have this disposable income because their expenses are lower because they're not going out. And what do they spend that stimulus check on? Do you, th do you think they spent it on smart stuff? No, they came and started getting tattoos like oh, a mofo. Oh, there's nothing else yeah, to do. Like, you couldn't really travel. So, so it got busy. Yo, I yeah. had clients that were at work because everyone was working remotely all of a sudden. And fools would be like, yeah, I'm working. Yeah, yeah it got in my phone busy. Real quick. Remember, Adam? When you first started working in my shop, it was during this whole like surge in tattoo business and interest or whatever, a as far bit. as like it clients the, or whatever. The taper off. And of I remember it. you mentioned to me, you're like, yo, that phone right there, like that phone just keeps ringing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, nobody it was, the it was phone. ringing so often that nobody could even answer the phone. Yeah. And I was in my backyard one like, day and bro. I heard the phone, the shop phone ringing in the backyard of my house. I remember telling you because it was ringing so often it was just in my head because it, it 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 just kept ringing all day long and all of us were tattooing to where we didn't have time to actually like answer it. So I was like, can we just I lower the volume, the volume to the lowest yeah. volume it could possibly be and we just weren't answering the phone because it was so freaking busy yeah. that there was nothing we could do to accommodate all the business. And that surge in business lasted for a solid year and a half and it got busier than I've ever experienced in my entire 10 or 11 years of tattooing. Absolutely. It was the absolute busiest as a result of all those stimulus checks and people having disposable income and not really knowing everybody was just spending money on everything at the time. Yeah. And there was nothing else to do. It's not like you can go on vacation, you know, yep. I, a tattooing was still like, you know, that's very local. You can go to a local shop. And I told everybody at the shop at the time, I said, look, if you guys, you know, have problems with this or as far as like safety or whatever, we'll do our best to go ahead and, uh, alleviate that for you by making sure that we stay away from you if you're paranoid about it right. and i actually yeah. cut the rent in every um for everybody at the shop uh in half i believe i said you guys only owe half rent for the entire time that we're shut down that way i could still pay the bills right. but it's not going to be a situation where you don't have a place to tattoo right. but you're still paying the paying shop money to I me was at, basically we just did gift card incentives to like when we were fully operational um all of our clients could like just still buy gift cards so that gave each individual artist like a revenue uh, but and everyone approaches it differently uh why were you so sketched out about covid my cautious nature bro uh, you went into survival mode you yeah. thought this was like the, <laughs> the, apocalypse. the zombies <laughs> Well, you know, there's another thing that might be valid with that, though, is they were saying it was affecting black people more than other races. They said that? It yeah. Was. It that, was affecting minorities yep, more, for sure. That specifically, people that were like Afro-American so, descent were dying at a higher, yeah, dying an higher alarmingly, le, alarmingly higher rate but, See, I than also others. don't keep up with news like that, so I watched that's every crazy, bit though. Of it. I was prone to every bit of it, so I was just like, I'm not going to f*** around with this shit. It wasn't that I was afraid of it. It was just there wasn't enough information. I was for afraid me to at make first, a, for sure. Not me. Not not for one second. There wasn't enough information for me to make a f an educated decision on what I wanted. I think it to was do. a lot coming at us so, at one time, but I'm never one to just uh, look into the media and just believe everything at face value because I've bread. seen the other side of media where it's all manipulated. I so, get it, <clears throat> but for me, it was like I had bread. I could stay in the house for a couple of months and be just to fine. see what's going on. Exactly. So if I was like, I'm gonna chill. And we'll see what happens. Start dropping like flies. You know, I'm going to be all right. 
So let's talk about the surgeon oh, tattoo business, though, and how that happened. Why do you think that happened? Because it, it got like busier than it, 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 was a gold it, it had rush. ever been. It's this, this goddamn stimulus checks, them PPP loans, you know. Goddamn stimulus checks. <laughs> <laughs> As if we're mad about it. I, I got, got one. Those goddamn yeah. stimulus checks. I'm just saying, <laughs> goddamn stimulus checks, them PPP loans. People were doing all kind of PPP fraud shit. So yeah. my yeah. had bread then. Yeah. And then, like, also gas plummeted because no one was traveling. Yeah. So cost of transportation went way f- down. Cost of f- lights went way f- down. So everyone just had Everybody just had bread. extra money, Everybody disposable income. Bread, and they didn't spend it on it nothing great. smart. Great. Which I'm not saying tattoos aren't a smart thing to spend money on because it's one of the few things it's that you can't get repossessed. It's not essential. You know what I'm saying? Though. But it's non essential, yeah. yeah. So the surge, how long did it last? I don't even know, dude. I think it lasted a year, year I'm and a half. I'm still in the surge, bro. I'm always I'm in the surge. I'm still in the bro. surge. I'm That's still getting that. paper, baby. You know what I'm well, of course we all are because we're good tattooers, yeah. but I, I think that it's definitely a lot less. That phone is not ringing literally 24-7 anymore. It's still ringing. Bro, it but... still rings. <laughs> <laughs> well, my shop is busy, man. What you know? I think that's why I did a good job. The, well, yeah, we're on the upswing of that. But if we're being realistic, uh, this is starting to slow down a little bit. Um, not everybody has those uh, government stimulus incentives. To that's spend true. Their money. A lot of people are getting locked up from the PP loans. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> also, a lot of people, I think, are thinking about the recession that's coming. That is technically we're already in a recession. There's a lot of right? fraudulent PPP loans. There's, we're already in a recession, technically. And recession, a lot of people understand yeah. that that is going to get worse. And I feel like a lot of people are starting to re-examine their finances and the things they're spending money on and they're deciding that maybe tattooing is something that they should slow down on a little bit so i'm not necessarily saying that it's getting slow for us but i think industry-wide it actually is uh getting to the point to where there are there are more cancellations right. there are less people that are willing to spend money from a certain demographic I'm on tattooing. That, but at the same time i just got tattooed mm-hmm. the other day mm-hmm. by james and it made me feel awesome What'd you get? Uh, i'm about to get tattooed <laughs> yeah i'm about to get tattooed i think tomorrow it out. and see. uh for real yeah yeah you fix up the crack because nah, there's no way to get the angle on it on the camera yeah. why yeah, make them show it i gotta yeah. do that right we'll now post a picture uh, on the <laughs> shit later but like we don't have is. to do all that uh <laughs> don't <laughs> don't pressure your... adam to get naked man when yeah, he wants dude, to he honestly, will yeah. 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 that's it way too private much. for the pod for much. adam okay <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, dude. Uh, I will say like when You're it comes to getting it tattooed. <laughs> when it comes to getting tattooed, it's always the right time. <laughs> Personally, all right. My viewpoint on it is this: I feel like it is going to slow down, not just for tattooing, but all all kinds of industries that are considered to be luxury expenses, you know, purchases or whatever. And I feel like a lot of tattooers that started tattooing during this time period when it was like an explosion of business that it's never been this busy before they're gonna feel that hurt they're gonna feel that hurt because they thought i am the shit and that's the reason why i'm so busy right now is because i'm i'm a god i'm saying and uh i'm blowing up the way that i thought that i should when really a lot of us like humble them we started tattooing during a time to where it's like you get one walk in a week but split between five artists you're happy i'm saying and you're happy and and you're scraping by i remember walk-in bases uh some of the shops i've been at used to be if you show up the earliest exactly that's 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 how you got like like there's a rotation yes and that rotation hasn't had to exist for a long time and might never have to exist at my shop because it is pretty busy but I feel like it's going to hurt a lot of specific demographics of tattooers. It's going to weed out a lot of the tattooers that are at a lower skill level that have uh, put themselves in a position where... I only do realistic roses. Yeah, they're getting very, very selective, Bro, right? I only do realistic roses. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got real, real selective and real picky when they're only a year or two years into their career, right? Because they felt like they had, by skill, by virtue of skill earned the ability to do that but really it was an environmental large-scale thing that was happening and i think a lot of those people are going to get a wake-up call and i feel a lot of people that are in private studios are going to end up getting hurt and a lot of these private studios with these tattooers that have only been tattooing for a year and a half and they're really not that good but they just feel like they have enough clientele to do it they're probably going to end up getting shut down and the only private studios that are going to still exist are the types that xavier works at where it's a bunch of elite level tattoo artists that are but essentially giving each other and overflow and they already have enough clout where we've been selecting artists like that for a decade. Exactly. So it's not going to hurt people like you. Selecting clients more so like, like a idea. collective though. Yeah, it's, it's more of a collective. It's exactly. But I think it's going to hurt all the people that are like, you know what? So, I've been tattooing for six months. I'm booked out really far. 
because everybody's just getting a lot of tattoos right now, I'm going to open up a pri private studio because I am the shit and those people are going to end up going out of business. And I feel like probably if I had to estimate, I would say about 10 or 15% of all tattoo artists are going to end up changing careers within the next two years. Well, Nicole, what are, what are your predictions? What do you think is going to happen with, uh, you also know? have you felt that staying as a younger artist, do you feel like the shit's changing? Um, I mean, I, you know, I was apprenticing from 2017 to 2019. So I got like, you know, almost uh, like almost two years of experience working at the shop and seeing that environment before COVID. Um, and then I was at a different shop for like seven months before I came back to Dark Horse. Um, and even like when, cause I, I started full time at that, that other shop in December of 2020. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was still busy. As like I was booked like almost purely off of Instagram, just people asking me on questions on Instagram all the time, which honestly now really doesn't happen. I get You're feeling a decline at this point. Yeah, I definitely from Instagram, uh, like inquiries. I, I feel like uh, it was really steady, like December to maybe like, so December 2020 to maybe like May of 2021. And then there, I had like a weird gap and then I switched shops and then I, it was pretty good. And then it was like the regular holidays. And then th this last summer, I think it was, there was just a weird like halt in everything. Just dry. Why yeah. do you think that was though? I, I mean... I don't know. I try not to panic about it, you know, because I feel like that thing's kind of its own animal. Um, and like James likes to say, like, that's a good time to like sharpen the sword and focus on like other skills. And in those times, do you, uh, I don't know, do things like uh, drawing outside of tattooing? Do you do like uh, updating your portfolio? Is that like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. She's yeah. talking about with the sharpening the sword. I told her. I think so too. Because she learned from me, right? She was my apprentice. And I told her when a samurai is not cutting heads off, he is sharpening his sword. Absolutely. Training. So training. it's just about doing those things in the background. When you're not actively employing the skill that you're building or whatever, then it's time to build it some more and, you know, do all those peripheral things that yeah. you didn't have time to do because you were yeah, so do busy adjacent tattooing. adjacent shit. Like I think uh, as a tattooer, that's always what we're doing is, like, when you find those times at, like, being a lull, uh, that's when you're putting in the work outside of tattooing. Right, and you're it's drawing, yeah. you're marketing, you're drawing, fucking painting. working on content. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. doing something that still pertains to the overall. So what do you guys, have you guys made any moves like going forward as far as how you're adjusting your lifestyle, your expenses or anything in anticipation of the recession? Because I feel like personally, it's going to get real bad, not only because they gave too many handouts out during the COVID, they shut stuff down uh, for too long during the COVID. Uh, everybody uh, spent way too much money because they thought they were balling during the COVID. And now reality is going to start setting in for everybody. Everybody's going to have less money. People are going to spend less money on tattoos. And as a result, I might have to tighten my belt a little bit and start making more defensive plays. Have you guys started doing any of that at all? Or do you Definitely. disagree with that philosophy? 100%. 100% I have. Um, just kind of intuitively. Um, me, I stopped really like going to too many expensive dinners. I love how I, the very last thing we talked about is how well, all the cares. stuff we spend our money on that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> still spending Still bread, strip clubs, but, but like, but like you know, less, just you know. <laughs> Dream Palace, not Jags right. every night. Like, because like my <laughs> I still spend bread. But like, like I said in the last video, it's a calculated spend after I've amassed so much, then I'll splurge a little. But like right now, you know, I'm not really eating out too much. I've upped my schedule from, uh, I think I was at like four days a week to six days a week. So, like, I'm damn near working every day. And then this is our seventh day. I'm over here with y'all, you know, hustling in another end. Same here. And then you got to get it while the getting's good right, right. now, in I my think, opinion. Uh, I'm always thinking about the defense, you know, um, just outside of tattooing. Because to me, tattooing is the offense um, when it comes to the defense. I'm on the other end. I mean, James knows. When you're like, Oh, sorry. When your intuition is introverted. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just think about plays like this, like long-term plays. He's a um, long game it guy. Takes a, it, it takes a balance of both. So, like, me personally, I'm involved in, like, um, different, like, long-term investments. Um, I'm buying a house right now. But I'm also getting rid of uh, different assets that have, um, you know, quite a bit of value to them. 
Um, if you ever get in like gold and stuff like that, that typically like retains its value. Um, so, you know, for somebody like if mm-hmm. you're like this fool is like buying in on gold and it, it might even, even just be like a inadvertent kind of like subconscious thing that he's, he's lavishly spending on. But ultimately at the end of the day, there's, you can melt that down and it retains its value pretty well. Yeah. And it tends to perform in the opposite direction of, uh, the dollar. So if inflation happens very heavily, then uh, precious metals tend to move in the opposite direction. Um, you know, if the dollar drops, inflation uh, increases. The Federal Reserve has been hiking interest rates pretty heavily to try to combat that for the past year or so. But I don't think it can happen indefinitely. And eventually they're going to stop doing that because banks are failing now, um, partially because of that. Like, you know, not saying I'm some finance expert, right? But it's just my general understanding of it. But I feel like uh, certainly... Um, as they stop hiking those interest rates and do a 180 on that, it's going to create a situation where inflation is going to resume, maybe even at a faster pace um, than what it was earlier. And having hard assets is going to be more valuable than having dollars that are worth less as they just print more and more and more, which I reduces was, uh, the value. Of I was them. just talking about this yesterday, too, is doing trades. You almost forget like up until these points where it starts to like fizzle out you forget that as a tattooer you have a very uh important trade that you can you can wheel and deal you can bargain you know like it can become a bartering thing if it needs to be bartering yes absolutely and if it needs to be, if it needs to, be. And and we prefer like not to last, do that. Yeah, of course, that's I will the last take a meal, resort. a chicken, and three precious gemstones. Bro, I just want like two, thing, two thirty like, packs of Natty can... Light. You know what I'm saying? And that's a sleeve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two thirty racks of yeah. Natty Light. Because right now, the, the strawberry one lemonade. full beef tender. Yeah, because right now a sleeve for me too. might cost twenty grand or you something. But in a year, it might be two packs of Natty Light cost twenty grand. That's Strawberry lemonade, Natty Light. Are you serious? Yeah, that's bro, wild. that's that's Salt River shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, all I'm saying is I like uh, the Salt River, bro. So you, far. as a tattooer, last resort is to barter. And like, if we come into those times, I was talking to my client yesterday. Like, yo, we could barter some shit on a <laughs> car. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be motorcycles, accepting like guns, guns gold, like, jewelry, yep. electronics. Um, what else holds its value? Electronics like, don't hold their value. It depends on what type, but most of them don't. Like Apple shit, you know what I'm saying? And computers and cameras. You ever try it to trade in an iPhone? It goes quick. Depreciation happens every All year. Right, How much do they offer you on the trade in on the iPhone, I'll even retract, if you have last year's I'm model? retract my previous. The electronics <laughs> needs to be deleted like, from that. I take that. it back. Stop take roasting me. <laughs> so, All right, let me stick to what I initially said. Jewelry. Gold, guns, jewelry, ammunition. Um, Automotives. Vehicles. I was about to say that. Vehicles would be a move too. Real estate, but that's a tricky situation right Who's now as Adam's going estate, through. How are you going to trade somebody a tattoos. house for a tattoo? Talking about what's nah, we're talking about assets and what's important. Nah, we're oh, about oh, sorry. I, I got thought off you guys it. were talking about I got bartering off it, still. We're okay, yeah. <laughs> I got off of it. My bad. I'll barter you this tattoo for a house. Have yeah. you bartered anything for a tattoo before? Nicole? Uh, Yeah, actually. See? Yeah, right. like once. what was it? It's something embarrassing. No, was all... I mean it was some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> like, should I say that? I'll yeah, we're talking too. reishi shiitake, so it's okay. Yeah, you know, nothing going on yeah. here. Some cordyceps, yeah, some portobello. I ended up throwing exactly. them away. Lion's mane, so... you know. Hey, chaga, yeah. chaga. <laughs> I just think it's gonna get hard. And my advice to everybody that's out there that tattoos. What's up, Nicole? She got some. Oh, what? my friend Tessa, who's a professional oil painter. Mm-hmm. That painting that's in my room at the shop, the one that's up above the cabinets oh, she's right now. Dope. Yeah, that that was a trade. Nice. Yeah, so that that is uh, her work like PG. sells for like thousands. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Wow. Yeah, no, her yeah, her shit's legit. Like, really, like really good. yeah, she said for that size, it she normally charges like around like over six hundred or something. Nice. So, but I mean, her shit's good. She's amazing. So I was like, dude, f- yeah, I want one of your paintings so bad. Like, I'd love to trade you. That's a good trade. So yeah, once, twice, I guess I've done that. So yeah, man, you know, every times was hard, and then like, still hustled anyway i think when it comes to tattooers and just artists in general we're all creatives and we're gonna figure out a a means oh yeah anyway we're mad max in this shit either way bro like renaissance you know like x over here we were talking about how this fool is just a renaissance man i think like that that just goes across the board to like most tattooers like you guys see us as tattooers (laughs) but there's a lot of stuff just behind the scenes that you know when we all just sharpen our swords at um what i think 
is important is to uh, don't let there be a lull in your hustle. Don't feel like the uh, good times that happened over the past couple years in terms of the surge of business is going to last indefinitely. There are going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be up, up cycles and down cycles. And what you want to do is you want to get it while the getting's good. Uh, milk everything for what it's worth as far as what has been happening right now on the ass end of this surge in business and save all your ducats and get your money right and start um, thinking about your business too. You know what I'm saying? Put some money into your marketing. You know, put some money in the shit that's going to make more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That me? too. But also, I'm just talking about storing um, like cash reserves and stuff. I, I don't feel personally it's a good idea right now to be cash rich. If you have a lot of dollars right now, the dollar is about to take a pretty big hit. It might not be permanent because I believe in America, but it's probably going to be a temporary dip. So having hard assets and commodities uh, like such as precious metals or like a lot of the shit that I'm, I'm invested in right now as far as stocks go are like commodities ETFs where it's like hard goods like steel and oil and shit like that. And I'm saying stuff like that is going to retain its value because things that are physically valuable in a material way are worth what they're worth. But the dollar can fluctuate. And with the Federal Reserve reversing uh, their interest rate rate heights, what's going to happen is the dollar is going to take a big dive and it's going to become less valuable. So having $60,000 in cash stuffed under your mattress is probably not going to be a good idea two years from now. It's a better idea to have a little bit of cash for emergency reserves for those times when you're going to need to make payments and you don't want to have to sell something at a lower price than what it's worth right away for that emergency thing that you need to fix. But essentially remain somewhat cash poor, but asset rich. And I feel like that's the best way moving forward financially for tattooers. So that's just my advice. Everybody else here might disagree, but take it for what it's worth. If you're watching this video, hustle hard as right now, save your money and try to put your money in places where it's going to retain value, even if the dollar itself, the U.S. dollar is not valuable.